David J. Coleman here and welcome to another chapter of Coleman on Purpose. Yes, this is the second chapter of my podcast series. And for those of you that listened to my very first premiere chapter of Coleman on Purpose, which was Church Boy Gone Bad, I want to thank each and every one of you, whether you listen to it on YouTube, whether you listen to it on Apple Podcasts or even Spotify or even Anchor. Those of you that have followed or even liked my YouTube channel so you can hear future uh, podcast episodes that come there. I want to thank each and every one of you. It really warmed my heart when I heard that people actually heard my message and they were impacted by it and were like, oh, that's me. Oh, I can definitely relate to that. Those are the things that I wanted this to be, not just me running off talking about random topics, but I think the application of me telling part of my story really enhances the topics that I'm going to discuss along the way on this podcast. And I look forward, man, I'm telling you, The ones that I've been working on, I'm telling you, you're really going to enjoy them. This specific chapter is something that I recorded back in October of 2021. The original title was going to be called Survivor Junior, but I changed the name around. It's entitled Survival of the Fittest, and it basically continues from where I left off on the last chapter, basically, because I went all the way up to a certain point in my story of just church as a teenager. And now we're kind of getting into right before I was heading off to college um, in 20, 2001. Yeah, 2001. Yeah, it's been a long time. So I hope you enjoyed this second chapter called Survival of the Fittest. All right, it's once again time for My Truth. This is a segment where I get to tell you my truth. So last time we were on here, I was talking about like the different effects of church in my life and how church affected every little portion of who I am today. And as I was going through my story, I came to this portion of the story where I was talking about me losing my memory and I couldn't go too into depth. So today on this Survivor Junior episode, I am highlighting me as a young kid going through such a traumatic time. That's why I call it Survivor Junior. I was young and it was like my first experience like this ever. So I didn't want to skim through the story because in order to understand that part of me you have to understand this part of my story so i can continue telling you about things that are on my mind so this is a very important part of my life so back in 2018 i worked on a project called the differently created black boy man now the reason i called it the differently created black boy man it was originally supposed to be called the black boy man but i decided to go with the differently created black boy man because I'm different like that. That's how my mind works. And the D and the C for differently created stood for David Coleman. Go figure. Yeah, that's how my brain is. So it's a really, really long title, but it was a really, really special project. 13 episode project that I did. It was originally supposed to have like another season, but it ended up just being a project that I did. And I'm very, very proud of it. But it was basically a time when I was basically explaining my story like I am now, but it was kind of, I guess you could say, animated. So it was really trying to draw people in through kind of entertainment purposes because I was including things like little skits in between and different things like that that I wanted to incorporate in it. So everything that I usually do is kind of like that. I try to incorporate bits and pieces of me from every uh, single aspect of things that I enjoy to do. And that's how, you know, my purpose or on purpose came along. Yeah, it is my purpose, but on purpose came along. So there was a specific episode I did that was called The Decision of Faith. It was a two part series that I did where I actually brought my parents into the show and i basically interviewed them without 
like you seeing my face or anything. They basically told my story because they kind of know better than what I do about my own story. That's the crazy part, because a lot of things when you go through a traumatic brain injury like I did or they call them acquired brain injury, you basically lose your memory. And then um, some people get it back. Some people don't. You know, the doctor said I wasn't going to, but I did. So I wanted to tell you about this specific time in my life, even though I don't remember all the little bits and pieces. I wanted to tell it from my perspective, from what I know. Some of things are what I've heard, but it's mainly what I know. So I was getting ready to go to college. I was about three days away from going to college. I had graduated from high school. I was trying to i just remember trying to get some gifts for friends that i had birthdays coming up for these virgo friends that i had um their birthdays were coming up so i was up trying to find gifts and again trying to appease everyone else you know trying to kind of fit in or make sure that i was good with everybody so i'm out here running around getting gifts and i happen to go to circuit city to purchase i guess maybe a cd or something from there and I end up falling through a glass case, having a seizure, which I had never had a seizure before in my life. This was the first time I'd ever had a seizure and quite scary, quite scary. I don't remember every single thing. I just kind of remember that day skimming through CDs. I know, I'm not sure if Aaliyah's CD had come out yet. I think it had already come out or her, uh, CD that it was one of the last ones she came out with it was like the mixture of things I care I think I care for you I think that was the one I don't know if that had come out yet I'm not sure I'm not gonna go into like the details of that anyway I just remember going to that store and falling through that case so they eventually found my wallet and they were able to con they were able to contact my mother uh, who was at home telling her that her son just fell through a glass case and we need to we're sending him to the hospital so little portions of that section of my life from august through october are a little bit blurry because i was in the hospital highly medicated lots of tests going on things were going on people were taking care of me i had people that were within the hospital that i knew from my church that worked as nurses there or um they, there were people that were there that knew me and were wondering what was going on so so many people were involved with my life that everybody had a true concern at that time of what was going on but my parents at the time what i'm told is they put me under an alias name because they didn't want people to actually find me inside the hospital which was you know good for me because they didn't know what was going on they didn't know what was happening why i'd fallen out the doctors didn't know what to call what was going on but all they knew was i was having to be fed through a tube i it was a bad bad brain injury so eventually i came out of that but let me just talk really quickly about in between time there because the thing that was probably most hurtful about this time was that the people that i cared for the people that i was showing attention to there were a select few people that came to see me came to pray for me sent stuff um i can name them by name there's so many numerous people you all know who you are if you're listening to this who was there for me during that time but there were many people that had written me off i'm not sure if they went to the extent of saying that i had died but there were many other rumors that were going on at that time that were saying you know he has this or he's getting ready to die i think somebody said i had aids it was, there was a lot of different things that were that were being put out during that time which brought me back to a series i watched called insecure i know you probably know the final season um on hbo was airing last year and there is a girl that is on there named kelly they went back to her college reunion and basically they had written her offer said she died and it made her reflect on wow 
is this all my life was worth? Uh, I was just good at the stanky leg, which was funny in a way, but it's true. Many people have goals and aspirations and dreams and they can be cut short just like that. In a second, they can be cut off. That experience made me realize or made me appreciate life even more than what I usually would have. You know, it was an experience that I would never wish upon anyone because you lose friends during that time. You really find out who's really the closest to you that time. Life goes on. And even in the profession that I'm in, I'm going to get into that in later, you know, later chapters. You know, I was, I'm a flight attendant. So, you know, your life goes on even if something happens to you as a flight attendant. I'm, I'm in a lot of these careers and different things where it almost forces you to chase your purpose. It almost forces you to make sure that you stay on your toes and know that life is not guaranteed. This whole experience that I had losing my memory and having a praying family around me and people that actually cared, it really showed me the true meaning of life. And even through the struggle and through the hard times or the things that I felt like, you know, I didn't have the opportunity to do on time, it tells you how valuable you are and it makes you value different things and that's why sometimes people wonder why i have such a close relationship with my parents why i love on those people that loved on me during that time so much or have to keep them close to me or feel like there is still a connection that is there not meaning that everything has to stay the exact same as what it was but there is a special place that you hold in my heart because during the toughest time you stuck by me you were there for me so I look at those things so much differently, and that's why I love my parents so much. That's why I have such a close bond with them is because they prayed me through that time. And when many doctors were saying do different things, they stuck with what they knew, which was the Lord. And they were like, OK, we're going to believe that he's going to be OK and we're going to pray him through it. It might not have been easy for them at that time. It might have been difficult to see what the future held from that time, but they stuck close to what they believed. And that's what even pushes me further to make sure that I stay close to what I believe. Because even after all of that, I still had to learn things for myself. So after getting out of college, going through that whole process where they never said I was going to go, I got out in five years and I was supposed to have four, but it took me a little bit longer, but I did it. I graduated from college and got engaged my senior year of college going through even going through all of this crazy stuff i got engaged and got married three months after college think about the rapid just how quick everything happened with that you're still going through the, the trauma of things you're still on medication you're still going through all of those things and we don't take time to realize that something happened we kind of just say, let's just push that off to the side. Maybe, you know, we'll, we'll just say that didn't really happen. And we'll just say, you know, we'll try to cover it up with all this other stuff. But in a way, it's almost like you're being reborn. When you have something happen like that and your brain is resetting and you have all of these things coming back to you and you're relearning everything and you're actually going, like I had to take some remedial classes at times for math and writing. My writing was so sloppy. I think it's still sloppy, but it was always sloppy. So I can't really say it was an improvement, but I had to learn how to write letters. I was writing like the letter P backwards and, and just different things. People don't know. I learned to walk again. I learned so many different things and people just don't understand the magnitude of what happens to a person when you go through something like that and you come through and you're still like, what is my purpose here on, on earth or why am I still here or why did I survive this or why did I have to come through this? You don't realize it when you're going through stuff like that. So I know I sound very passionate about this because this is a major part of my life. This is what I have to use for good. This is a part of what I have to use for helping someone else or helping someone through something or seeing things in a different perspective. Having that experience helps me to see things from a different perspective than any regular person who has always been on the up and up or maybe not even on the up and up but has not gone through that same experience. So nobody can tell my story like me. And that's it. Even though my parents may know more about that, 
uh, than me about that time in my life, they still can't tell the story from my perspective or what I'm going through or what my brain thinks. So that is why I thought On Purpose was so important is because even coming out of uh, out of college and getting married and jumping into something like that while not even working through some of the things that I needed to work to, it's not that it was a mistake. It was a portion of my life that had to happen for me to realize the importance of what is real and what is true and what is meant to be. So through all of that, and I'm going to get into that in my next chapter because I'm going to be talking about the X factor of things. And I want to talk about that because it's important to know because that is a portion of my life. Also, I was married. I am now divorced. But that is a crucial part of my life because it taught me so many different things that I never knew before. So I had to relearn those things and I had to reimagine what life is after a traumatic in injury like that. So as things begin to change and as things begin to, as I begin to refocus on what was important, I believe that the events made, how should I say it, my subconscious about how I speak or how I come across to others, it made it seem like it was almost like I was double caring, like when I was in, in grade school. So what I talked about last week still persisted when I had my brain injury. So after that point, I was caring even more about what people thought because I was like, am I slurring my speech? Am I coming across okay? I'm a little embarrassed about this situation because I didn't get through college as quick as everybody else. Um, I don't have all of these things. I went through a divorce, which... I didn't even work through that in therapy. I just was like, okay, we're divorced. I did like one little, two little counseling sessions and then was like, okay, I can do this all on my own. That was a big mistake for me. I am in therapy now and I encourage anybody else that needs therapy to go to therapy because you are still, I was still carrying some of those same ideals and habits that I was carrying back from high school, which I still work through now. There's still times when I care too much about what everyone is thinking, but it's a process and it's a journey to get you to where you need to be. You have to, you have to get to that place where you care about me, myself, and I, and what God has intended for me. So now I find myself not living for what others want me to do, but beginning to live for me, who I truly am, and what God has truly intended for my life. So I look at myself as like, I'm really not a brand new David. This is not, this is not brand new David. This is the same David that's always been here. But now the true me is actually being revealed with no shame, with no fear. So as I continue to navigate through this process and deal with things like, you know, death, because when you have almost like a near death type experience or feeling like your life will never be the same, you tend to act a different way. So I work through all of these things in my head. I think about the past sometimes but there is always a way forward even though you have to revisit some of those things so that you can heal those places you find ways to build yourself and to make yourself better or to really focus on the things that matter so you can only take things one step at a time and i try to tell people that all the time you got to take your steps the way they're intended to be and things happen for a reason so I'm learning that I'm realizing that each and every single day and all I can do is like hope that people continue to grasp at the importance of what you are here for and why you are here and what you're meant to do or put out into this earth everyone has one you just got to find it and tune in to what that thing is and I'll leave that on period. So that was chapter two of Coleman on purpose. I kind of stopped that one real abruptly because I didn't want to go any further, but I did write 
something while I was in the midst of doing this chapter. and I just wanted to share it with you real quick. Um, I wrote, I feel like sometimes God just sort of placed me here and was like, figure it out. I'm giving you these gifts. These type of people are going to like you, but it's not going to be people that everyone else looks like. I always wanted to be that cool person or popular or completely irresistibly attractive. And over time, I built that confidence. I realized marriage wasn't going to help me find me. A casting for an amazing television show or being thrust into the industry wasn't going to fix me or help me find me. My friend or friends were not going to help me find me. Through Christ, I had to find me. And that was through very different circumstances or setups than I thought I was supposed to have. I had to relinquish my control and let God help me find me. I can't be what everyone else wants me to be. I have to walk my own path. God put me here and I'm still in process of finding those reasons. He deaf is not done with me. And I just wanted to share that little piece with you because I didn't really know how to incorporate that while I was doing this chapter inside of there. So I wanted to share it with you because I thought that that was really insightful. Some of the things that just came to me during that time and I'll just be shooting it off the top of my head and stuff like that. But these are things that that matter. These are things that are important. So I do hope you enjoyed that portion of my story because it's leading up or it's building up to each thing that I'm basically going to be talking about within this show. So I definitely, like I said, once I'm done doing all of my chapters, we'll start getting into like episodes instead of like chapters because I want to start incorporating others. So if you connect with any of these episodes that I'll be doing or chapters that I'll be doing and want to be on something in the future, I'm, I've already started talking to some people. I would love to get other perspectives for some of these things because I'm not the only perspective and a lot of other people have these stories and they come from different vantage points. So I would definitely love to get into that with uh, some of you. So let me know. Hit me up. Make sure you are following me. Follow my YouTube channel, Deluxe Dave, D-E-L-U-X-E-D-A-V-E. -E. You can find it at King David 24 That's YouTube.com slash King David 24 You can also follow me on Instagram at Deluxe Dave, D-E-L-U-X-E-D-A-V-E. E, that's where you'll find the link for any future podcast. Also, you can go to Anchor, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. I have not figured out how to get it on Google Podcasts yet. I'm not sure how many people use Google Podcasts. I've never used it, but um, if I do happen to find a way to get it on there, I definitely will get all of these chapters on here. Also, make sure you come back for the next chapter that I'll be talking about the X factors. I want to make sure I'm letting you know what's coming up next. The X factors is a very interesting chapter in my life, but I want to make sure that uh, you tune back in and make sure you're following the playlist that I have set up on Spotify for this week's episode. If you didn't know, because this is like a survivor type week and I've been talking about survival of the fittest. I am including all Destiny's Child songs on here because one of my favorite albums from Destiny's Child is Survivor. So everything will be in that type of flow. It'll be that Destiny's Child flow uh, for this week. So if you want to hear some good uh, music from my playlist, make sure you go ahead and check that out on Spotify. Once again, thank you so much for listening to this week's podcast. I'll be talking to you all soon. We'll release the next chapter.